Good afternoon. Welcome. This is Roy Hambert from Small Town Underground, and today we're going to be interviewing Tina Painter for the Walker County School Board position, Post 3. That's in a special election here in Walker County, which will happen on December the 3rd, countywide. Uh, Tina has agreed to come in for an interview today, and we're going to ask her some questions, and uh, she's going to give us some insight and, and share her uh, information with us. So welcome to the show, Tina. Thank you so much for having me. Yes, ma'am. Uh, looking forward to it. So let's start off by introducing yourself. Tell the people who you are. Give us a little bit of background. Okay. I'm Tina Painter. I'm running for uh, Board of Education Post 3. Uh, that is um, covers the area of Chattanooga Valley and uh, Flintstone. Um, it is a countywide race, though, which is uh, it's a, that means everybody in the county can vote for me. And I hope you will. Um, I have been in education for over 40 years. I went to UTC, uh, graduated with a, a, a bachelor in uh, um, math education. Uh, while I was at UCT, UCT, UTC, I, um, uh, that, of course, that was my major. I actually started there doing, had a tutoring class um, uh, while I was there. And, in a work study that I did there. And uh, so uh, did that sort of thing. Um, I've been in the classroom, uh, taught in the classroom for over 30 years. So I feel like as a uh, educator that I can bring a lot to the table as a board member. Um, I've, uh, I'm for the student, and uh, students and and hoping that they get the best education possible uh, sort of add into that while I'm running I want to uh, uh, I want Walker County to be the best school system around um, I enjoy like a teaching for example and one reasons why I went into teaching was I loved math so much and people have such trouble in math I'm like you know I want these kids to understand that, that they can, uh, uh, it, it's not that hard, you know. I wanted right. to go in there and be able to explain it to them where they could understand it and enjoy it as much as I did. So that's one reason why I went into education. Uh, I'm looking forward to serving on the school board. Uh, I feel like that I would do a good job uh, as far as um, uh, for the student. I'm, I want the student to get the best education possible. I want to involve parents. I would like to uh, for them to get involved in their education. Uh, there's ways that we can maybe do community services to get them out there and bring them in um, and uh, help them out. And then also, um, I'm for the taxpayer. Uh, I think that we should definitely um, uh, reduce the burden on that ta on the property owner cuz right now the 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 property owners are are actually um share uh, have most of the burden there so absolutely uh we need to to get that done and i think i went into okay. <laughs> a lot of other things there no, you're too fine. Probably, you're fine. but we'll talk about that later <laughs> absolutely okay. all right i'm sorry well here we got a list of questions that we covered okay. with every candidate okay. and we'll just kind of go go through and start with them all right okay. the first one is how do you feel about public education in public schools in general well i, I think it's necessary first of all and i would like I said a minute ago, I want Walker County to be the best. And right. so we, we need to work on our literacy rates, making sure that we bring those scores up. Um, I want to, uh, it should be a safe place. I, I, we have a lot of things already in place in Walker County to keep our students safe. Um, I, I, you know, I know a lot of people want to send their children to private schools. Not everybody can do that. Right. And, and so... I think that we need to have the best we can have for them, for those that can't do that. And I would like to see those people come back, right. <laughs> you know, that uh, uh, have sent their children somewhere else. Sure. I mean, I have my kids in public school their whole life. So, you know, right. um, I've always been involved in the in public school. You know, right. I, I like Walker County. I think we have a good system up here. So, right. All right. Let me ask, um, what do you consider as the role of a school board member? Okay. When I'm 
went and interviewed for the position that I was appointed to, I I wanted to know what my role was. Right. And uh, so I went through the list of, first of all, we hired the superintendent. I mean, that's our responsibility to choose the superintendent. We also, we voted on the budget. We voted on the millage rate. I mean, it, that's things that we decide also. Uh, we vote on contracts. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of people don't realize that, you know, when they're, I mean, I guess they do, but, you know, it's up to us to choose what contract we, we use for everything from who does the roof to <laughs> right. the, uh, uh, that sort of thing. Uh, one of the other things that we do is, uh, well, what we don't do is we can't get involved in in the day-to-day -day running. That's the superintendent's job to right. do that. But he gives us rep recommendations, and we can, we can also talk to him about what we expect to mm -hmm. as far as that goes for our schools. Um, I know I'm probably leaving something out there, but. <laughs> no, that's fine. Yeah, you're fine. Okay. Um, what, is your, what is your vision and your goals for Walker County Schools? Well, um, one of the biggest goals is to bring up our uh, scores. And when I say bring up scores, that sounds horrible. But we use testing to um, uh, determine how well we are succeeding. Right. Milestones. Right? It's milestones. It's what it's called, milestones. Uh, so we we use that as a, a, a basis of what we need to do, and that's something that we've got to work on because the literacy right now is just really uh, we're below state averages, wow. and that's pretty low. I mean, you know, and right. then we're most of our uh, literacy scores are below this uh, the RISA, the, our uh, Northwest Georgia RISA. Um, mm -hmm schools around us and we're, we're at the bottom of the list of the, a yeah. lot of those um, scores there too. So that's the main thing we need to get uh, brought up. Um, uh, let's see, I think you asked um, uh, what, what we need to, our goals need to be. That's one of the things. Um, we also need to, uh, you know, as a, as a board member, uh, we need to uh, also, uh, you know, we're, we're funding it and all that sort of thing. Right. And we need to uh, work on ways to get it to where it's it's not so burdensome. But, um, right. As far as property taxes, a lot of different ways we can do things, right? Right, right. Mm -hmm. um, so I know I probably wanted to say something else there. but No, you're fine. Okay. So let's see, the Walker County school system has a large number of students and parents who have opted for private schools. Should there be a strategy to reattract these students? And do you have any suggestions? I think once they see improvement in our scores, mm -hmm. that would really uh, bring them back, I would think. I know that there's a lot of people that, I mean, you know, they, they work at Walker County schools and don't send their children to Walker County School. So evidently, mm -hmm. you know, there are some people out there that don't think we're maybe doing as good a job as we should. Right. So if we can get our schools um, back to where they're, uh, I guess, recognized as a, a leader in the in the whole area, you mm -hmm. know, as far as uh, test scores go. Uh, something I, I should have brought back brought up sooner is, is there's some amazing things going on though in Walker County yeah, Schools. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, Despite I mean, the, yes, the, you know. You got the Ag program at, mm -hmm. at Ridgeland, which is just absolutely wonderful. I mean, I didn't realize what all it encompassed there and it, it, it it's just phenomenal what they do there. Uh, then you have the launch program uh, with, with partnered up with North, Northwest Georgia. Mm -hmm. um, and so there's a lot of things that are good going on right now that right. we need to maybe point out more. And that's sure. And, and like you said, you got to take the good with the bad. You identify the problems, the weaknesses of this. And it sounds to me like your focus is that you're, you're trying to identify the weaknesses, right, and bring mm -hmm. them back up with right. all the good things. And that's, and that's you know, that's what we work with with the, with the superintendent mm -hmm. is to, you know, say these are our goals. We want our test scores up by 2026, right. you know, you know come up with some strategies to help that happen right? and that sort of thing. So. Gotcha. Okay. And uh, let's see here. <clears throat> Let me go back. 
Ah, well, let's just cover this one. How do you plan to communicate your vision and promote your transparency as a board member? Now, we've talked a little bit about this, right? The school board seems to be, um, to people like me who've never been involved, is a lot harder to get in or to get your voice heard. So how would you go about making it a little more transparent? Um, well, and, and I know a lot of people have talked about our policy on uh, uh, somebody just speaking in a board meeting. Uh, you know, that's something that I think probably needs to be looked at again mm -hmm. and uh, and make it more accessible for right. the public to be able to speak. I just, um, we, you know, now there are things in the school, the school board when they meet, it's, it's not quite like the, the uh, commissioners and mm -hmm. all, you know, we're just conducting business and all. Right. It's not like you're, uh, right, I don't, it's not. Their misconception, you have, right. when you go into business mode, that's obviously behind closed doors, but right. I know a lot of the public have, have been a little bit concerned with the fact that it's very hard to get on and there's a very yeah. strict way to get your voice out there. And uh, exactly. I think a lot, of, I think that bothers a lot of people. So. Right. Uh, but, you know, we, uh, this last board meeting, we had a teacher speak mm -hmm. and, you know, she was getting her, her concerns across. she followed the chain of command and brought it to the school board and asked for policy on something. And, and I thought that was, I thought that was great. And, you know, that, you know, she, but she did have to go through a lot to get there. She had to get on the agenda and right. all that sort of thing. But, you know, um, it's, it's very, it's very good to be able to hear from those right. that need to Absolutely. voice their concerns. I think the, uh, education is one of the, the, most costly things in every county, right? Right. Uh, I think it's the biggest uh, part of any plan, any any financial plan, and they hire more people. So I think that a lot of people don't realize that, but there's a lot of stake in our education. And when you kind of understand that some of these educational programs that the state push aren't necessarily, you know, the core principles like reading, writing, and the ticket, we show up and be like, what's going on here? And we right. should be more involved the whole time, right? Right. That's how I kind of look at it. I hope to see the school board become a little more open, you know. Right. And and I've tried to do that. Uh, mm -hmm. We've had some recent votes uh, that I've tried to get some things out there that and for the public to see. And, right. and I wanted to be transparent with that. Okay. So um, that's something that I've, I've pushed for. Well, good. All right. Let's see here. Um what is your assessment of the current local salary supplement, including the pay scale for educational support personnel such as bus drivers, cafeteria workers, custodial workers, electrical workers, teachers, etc.? Okay. Um, and I've, I've tried to find out what that number is on my right. own uh, as far as the different supplements. I've, I've, I've seen a few things. I'm not sure how current they are, though. Uh, but um, I've you know, we want to attract people to work here. Right. Now, one of the biggest incentives of working in Georgia is our retirement system. Mm -hmm. And that is a big incentive, you know, uh, even for those that aren't educators that are just in, you know, correct, uh, in cafeteria workers and all that sort of thing. And so it's, it's, that's one thing that's a big draw. Uh, we need to look at, possibly raising those uh, supplements because mm -hmm. we need to keep we need to keep our good workers like right. that and, well you know yeah. that's another misconception I think when you think of school you you think of teachers you know mm -hmm. you really just think of teachers and students but there's right. so much more that goes into an education system there's all the support mechanisms in place and sometimes there's a drastic uh, difference between that supplemental income and things like that and it, it's I'm not even saying it's bad, but our school systems are competitive every single right. county. And so obviously we've got to look at those things and figure out how we can sort of bring those things up without put, putting the burden on the taxpayers, right? Right. Okay. Let's see. Would you be able or willing to visit schools in District 3 and schools across the entire system? I have. Okay. And I enjoy it. Uh, there's an amazing thing going on uh, down in Lafayette Middle School. Uh, a teacher down there has a ham radio club. I'm a ham radio operator. Right. And I went and, and to one of his meetings so far. I hadn't been able to go to many, but I've been to one so far. And uh, it was the room was packed, mm -hmm. and the kids enjoyed it. And that's just a... 
I mean, you know, STEM uh, program, that's a great mm-hmm. STEM program because right. you they get a lot of calculations and stuff going on when you're going out there and you're putting up a dipole and, mm-hmm. and uh, antennas and all that and having to figure it all out. So there's a lot of math and all that sort of thing in there, right. and it's it's just wonderful and amazing what they do there. And, and I visit other, other schools, too. Right. Uh, and uh, I, there's a lot of amazing things going on in Walker County. Yeah. There really is. Absolutely. I wish I'd had a ham radio class when I was going to school. <laughs> All right. Now, how would you measure success for a superintendent of schools? Okay. Uh, that's a good question because, uh, you know, there's uh, – uh, I think – let's go back to what the job of the superintendent is. The job of the superintendent is to manage the school system, basically uh, – oversee the schools and make sure that everybody's in compliance, Mm -hmm. you know, teachers, principals, and all that sort of thing. Be a leader. There's to be a leader in um, what goes on out there. I mean, we have our curriculum. You know, the state sets the standards, but then how are we going to meet those standards? We need to have somebody that's going to go in there and um, say, hey, this is what we need to to do here. Let's get it done. I mean, set set those goals for for the schools or for the teachers and principals and this is where we're heading. Let's see what we need to do to get here, get there and, and, and it will help improve schools also. Gotcha. Okay. And, uh, I believe, all right, this will be our last question that, um, I pretty much have asked everybody. So I saved this one for the, for the last, but what inspired you to run for the Walker County school board district three position? What's your inspiration? Well, I'm retired now, um, and, you know, being in education as long as I have been, I I just, you know, I've I've told people this before. Uh, My granddad, you know, way before I was ever born, thought of, I want you to know, uh, he was on the the school board board of trustees in Walker County back in the 30s. Wow. And so, you know, Back then, you know, what was important, reading, writing, arithmetic, it still is today. I mean, that's what that's what's the most important thing. And, you know, I think that um, the state has put, I mean, they set the standards that we teach, but they've put a lot of, uh, uh, I won't get into curriculum, but, you know, we need to have appropriate, um, what sort I'm looking for, um, levels, mm-hmm. you know, like you don't want to teach a sixth grader something in math that they're going to normally learn sure. in high school, you know. So, you know, uh, being able to be. Uh, well, I think our make, education system has gotten a little bit further away from, you know, the reading, writing, the right. basic, and they're like, practicing these DEI type education programs that really have nothing to do with education. And I think that's what we need to get back to, right? Right. And I'm glad you brought that up. I was asked that question at the debate the other night about DEI, and I said, well, I'm not for it. And I, that's all I came up with. And I started thinking about it later. When you talk about DEI, that's not equal right. education for everybody. It's, it's equity. Exactly. And, and there's a big difference. It cuts out co- competition. Mm-hmm. It cuts out merit. I mean, you know, lots of times... When you're in school, you work really hard. You, I think you should get that recognition or get that that grade that you deserve. Sure. It shouldn't be taken away from you because of right, somebody's some, some equitable cause. Right. To, you know that, that's ridiculous to be honest. Exactly. And just getting back to the basics, I think that's what elementary school should be about: is getting back to the basics. Absolutely. And it, it's the standards at the state level. It's hard to get through to them, mm-hmm. but. It's it's not getting back to those basics, and then we need to do that. Right. You know, worry about that only when they get up to high school or, or even to middle school. But you know, get those basics in there. Right. But, uh, and one other question that I had asked before: um, there's been a lot of talk about securing our students. You know, are you for continually securing our students away from, you know, issues of bad students or, or very negligible things that might happen, like some of these attacks on our schools? 
are you are you continue are you for the support of keeping officers in school and making oh. sure that we're secure and are securing our kids? Yes, okay. and I'm, we have SROs right yes. now, and that's great. Uh, we have a great security system uh, in place in all the schools that I mean that can be monitored from, you know, even the police department right. has can get in there and. You know, see a lot of things right away. I don't want to talk too much about the specifics of it, but sure. it's an awesome system. Uh, when I was still in, in education, part of the system that we're using here was at my school mm -hmm. that I was teaching at, and uh, so it, it was it was very good. We are also having drills. Mm -hmm. uh, I think quarterly is I believe if I, I think rem so. remember correctly, we're doing quarterly drills, which is great because you want to be able to think. You know, it's it's kind of like if you can, if you practiced enough, it'll just automatically come to you. So, yeah. you know, being able to flip the lights out, barricade the doors, yeah. you know, exactly. be quiet. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> that's this where, type of world we're living in, you just right. never know. So, yeah. Well, good. Um, that's really all I have on the questions. So um, I'm going to turn it over to you. Do you have anything else that you'd like to talk about? My opponent uh, was concerned about uh, that I voted for the Mika's brief, and he thought it was a waste of money. And I, I, I think he's wrong. I okay. need to be transparent here. That was the first thing that I think that shows that I'm being transparent is my vote. Um, we had a situation, and let me just briefly tell you the situation, where um, – there is a there are two there were two board members at the time on the school board that had children in the system uh, administration. Okay, and state law prohibits that first of all, and so it's just nepotism is what it is, and so we there was a a concerned citizen actually filed suit, and. Um, so it went to court, and uh, basically uh, they weren't given all the information. Okay. Okay. And so with the Mamika's brief, is uh, just sets the record straight. And I, if you don't mind, if I read something real quick about sure. there was an affidavit filed. Okay. By the superintendent, and um, I'm just gonna read here what it, what it said. It said co co coordinate physicians have no system-wide authority. They perform job tasks derived from the prospective director or the superintendent. The coordinator position is not considered as system administrative staff. And then it also said that the coordinator positions are not directly influenced by the board and therefore are not considered system administrative staff. Essentially, the coordinator positions are the equivalent of middle management and are not system administrative staff. That is incorrect. Okay. And that's what was, that give, was given to the court by the superintendent. All right. Um, and basically, we had policy in place at that time mm -hmm. that clearly states that that the uh, we had the nepotism policy that you cannot be a, a the same as the state, saying that you cannot be uh, in uh, have a child working in the uh, central office or the system uh, as a system administrator and be on the school board. Now, what what was claimed here was that they weren't they were just middle management, mm -hmm. and that is incorrect. Okay. In his own email sent as twenty twenty five staff under system administration were system coordinators. Mm -hmm. So if, even in his own Right, I see what you're um, saying. Documents sent out, it said that. Also, your pay scale, they are not paid as a regular teacher. They are paid as a system administrator. And, uh, and this was in July of 2016. I have to bring that with me too, just to make sure that that people understand that. And I'll just, I'll just look at this and read it from it. Um, System-wide coordinators, their base salary for certificate held. So um, basically the number of years of experience you have and that sort of thing. And then in um, uh, your degrees that you have, plus four times the local supplement, mm. all right? Okay. And then uh, that's gonna give you the coordinator's base salary. So that's the base salary to begin right. with. But then what makes them 
a system administrator also is that those extra 51 days that they're going to work more than the school teacher would. Right. They get their pay based on that coordinator's wow. base scale. So it, it, it makes it a quite a bit Got big it. jump in pay mm. that way, yes. which, I mean, you know, their system and coordinators, they deserve the pay, right? right? Gotcha. But, but that's the point. They are system. They are in that that group. So that was the main thing about the Amiga Street that we felt like we needed to get out there because okay. the board is, um, you know, it, we wanted to be transparent, basically. Mm -hmm. And I think part of the reason why we didn't realize that, or somebody didn't realize, I wasn't even on the board at the time of the right, case, right. okay? Uh, but the reason why some people didn't realize is because we didn't have this online. Or, uh, you know, you had to look back at things to find it. Right. And so once it was found, it's like, whoa, you know, we mm -hmm. really need to get that out there and let people know that we were not trying to cover up anything, that right. that this is actually a system administrator. And that was that was the reasoning behind the amicus brief. Right, okay. right. And, it, you know, my opponent said we wasted money. Uh, I don't think it was a waste to get it out there. Um, and we, the reason why we didn't use our own lawyer is because he uh, had a conflict of interest because he did promo Brono work for the 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 um, um, board members that were being sued. Okay. And so he could not ethically be able to, to right. put out this brief and that sort of thing. And a lot of people don't know this, it's been appealed. Mm -hmm. So basically uh, it, it could come down any day, the decision from the appeals court. Oh, okay. So this is currently being appealed. Right. Okay. Right. Wow. And, you know, a lot of people, and this is another thing a lot of people don't know, is that, um, after they won the initial case, then that's when two of those board members and an outgoing board member voted to extend the superintendent's contact mm. contract for three years. Okay. And typically you only, most of the time you only extend it one year. Right. So. I know there's been a lot of talk about that. A yeah. lot of people are confused about these things. So. Right. And so, you know, it, it, it just doesn't look. Good. <laughs> I mean, understand. You know. So basically, you're making a case for your transparency. Right. 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 And I think that every you know people should know that. I mean, gotcha. you know. Okay. It's just... Yeah, we appreciate it. Like I said, um, we're an open forum here, so um, that's pretty much our our interview. So I always give uh, you the last word. So tell the people why they should vote for you. Well, I believe that uh, you should vote for me because. I've been in education, like I said, for over 30 years. Uh, I want to see students succeed. I'm for student outcome. That's that everything I look at when I look at decisions on the board is to make, you know, is this helping the students? Are they going to be able to, to benefit from this? And we want them to uh, succeed in life and to be the best they can be. Uh, I'm also uh, for... To, uh, for parent involvement, I want uh, just to get parents more involved in the, the their child's education. And then also, I'm for the taxpayer. And I didn't discuss this earlier. I, I didn't bring this up as much, but I just wanted to say that we've got to figure out some other way, to t some way to take the, the majority of the, the burden off the the, uh, the majority of the taxes off the um, uh, property owner. Uh, QBE, which is Quality Basic Education, has um, uh, been developed in the mid-80s, and that's how they tax or how they fund school systems, and that needs to be looked at. Uh, and the only person that could change that is our legislators. Uh, one of the things that uh, we're going to um, do, if I'm I'm on the board in January, they always send uh, board members down to the state uh, to meet with legislators and and try to get a, our points across to them. So hopefully, we can I can be the one to go down there this uh, January and talk with our legislators and see what they can do to 
help us here. Um, and I just want everybody to remember to go out and vote on Tuesday, December the 3rd uh, for Tina Painter. I appreciate your vote. And uh, thank you. There's no doubt um, we've got to get with our legislatures and bring this thing back. And, and this it becomes a huge carousel of finger pointing all across all right. the board. It needs You're exactly to stop. Right. So, yeah. well, Tina, thank you so much thank for being with so us. Much. I appreciate it. And folks, like she said, there is a special election going on December 3rd, which is Tuesday. Uh, all precincts will be open in the county, so you need to go and you need to vote um, for who you think is going to run the school board the best. And uh, we're going to continue to follow these things. We're going to continue to, to be involved, the community, and along with the school board, the superintendent, the legislature, so we can fix this broken education system. So. Thank y'all. We'll see you later. The legislature legalized unverified voting in 2000. Like you said, too, but they're getting booty. Thank you. Uh, he said, go out there and rob these houses and bring back the bounty, and then that'll pay your way. It's a Republican to get the endorsement from the Georgia carry that they mean anything. You can't sit on the sidelines any longer. You must get involved in the game. This is your sign.